Gentlemen, I suggest you beam me aboard. Again, everybody, Ultimate DJ's here. Another month, another arc is in the books. And we bring you today the launch of arc two of the original series. We have an absolutely ridiculous amount of information to share with you, including some significant long-term improvements to the game. This maintenance patch is so much more than M27. It contains within it some long-lasting requests and much-needed adjustments to the game. So strap in, everybody. Get excited. Star Trek Fleet Command will look differently after today. Before we start, subscribe to the channel, like this video, click the bell. Be sure to leave your comments in the section below and we'll answer those as we go along. Hello, everybody. My name is Ultimate DJs, host of the Talking Trek podcast with a teaching trick video for you here today. So let's dive right in. Star Trek Fleet Command patch M27, the original series arc two. Before we even get into the arc, let's touch on two non-arc related game modifications that are here. Get ready to have your world rocked, G4 players. Announcing, finally, a rebalance to ship repair costs in G4 space. So there's two ways this is going to happen. First, you will immediately notice a reduction to repair costs because of a reduction in base values to repair the ships. Yes, folks, the biggest ship repair reduction in the history of the game coming for all G4 faction ships. Yes, the jelly is excluded. These base values are decreasing in range anywhere from 20 to 60 percent in some cases. And you're not going to be able to see this chart super duper well, but we're going to we're going to show it to you anyway. You can get a downloadable version from the Talking Trek Discord graphics room. Take a look here. Take a tier six Kelvin base cost adjustment, 52 percent off a tier four pylum, nearly 68 percent reduction. A tier five coronar, 64% base cost reduction. Now, some of you may say, well, what about the higher tiers? Yes, adjustments for you too, but at a scaling pace. Why? Before you get all aggravated uh, that these percentage changes are less for the higher tiers, you should know that this is part one of a two-part strategy on repair costs. New research is being introduced to 40 plus players this month, and part of this is a new uh, research specific to ship type that will increase repair cost efficiency up to another 150%. What does this do for the upper tier players? It results in a double whammy between base cost reduction and research. Most of these players are going to start seeing reductions anywhere between 20 and 50% at the higher tiers, and that's net savings. Absolutely huge news for those struggling at the front end of the G4 economy and very, very, very welcome information for the players who have pushed through these costs for so long. We will be covering in detail this new repair cost research and base value reduction analysis in a later video coming either later today or tomorrow, so tune in for that. But we have much more to discuss now before we even get in to this arc. I mentioned it a moment ago, a new research for repair cost reduction. Well, those are only four of the 64 new nodes of research that will be deposited into your station tree. Now, this tree is largely for 40 plus players, representing a huge step forward in the potential life expectancy of this particular research tree. This is not a shallow tree, nor will it be cheap, but some of the researches in here appear to be quite impactful once players work their way through and get some of this stuff upgraded. Taking a look at some of these researches, you can see how deep this tree is. Some interesting ones look to be increased efficiency in repair cost, as mentioned, additional pure researches to lower materials and resources needed, and lots of station research regarding platforms and weapons damage. Be warned though, this is not a quick research tree to work through. This appears to me to be at least a one-year expansion, and that's for aggressive players already in their mid to upper 40s. For a large majority of players, this expansion is not only a long way off, but multiple years in its completion for light spenders and free-to-play. There are four new primes for the G4 players, including prime manufacturing per ship type, and this is just like the prime crystal ore and gas in the G3 area, that it adds a plus one to the roll for your parts refining. 
Also, two new Apex nodes that are not locked to G4 players, but available to those Ops 35 plus for Apex research speed and Apex construction speed, helping a little bit more with those times and reducing the need for an absolute ton of speed ups per project. These, like all Apex research nodes, are standalone and have no dependencies other than Ops and cost only Apex research medals available during the Apex Alliance event. Be warned, G4 players, that when the game comes up after maintenance, this research tree will be locked by a station particle. This is only gonna last a few days while Scopely ensures that the upgrade rolls out smoothly and to prevent players from completing research too early. The station particle will be gifted as soon as Scopely greenlights server performance and is ready to launch the Research Solo Leaderboard events. So this way, no one can do research too early. No one can claim that they were allowed to do something in the game that will be evented and will be rewarded a little bit later. You'll get to it soon enough, we promise. Keep in mind, while we have not yet seen the actual patch notes at the time of this taping, we are also expecting Curon and Aaliyah Makinen to be fixed in this release. Now, we're covering the major game adjustments for this maintenance. That's what we've done. Now, let's jump into Arc 2 related content, introducing to you two new rare officers, Bones and Hikaru Sulu. At least one of these officers was revealed during a segment on our Talking Trek podcast. So visit our website, join our Discord, and subscribe to our podcast for more sneak peek info like this in the future. Taking a look at Bones first, officer ability first, <laughs> a little bit backwards, just an old country doctor. If the ship is in an explorer, or if the uh, ship is an explorer rather, then McCoy increases the stats of all officers by 20%. This is an ability that increases with promotion and actually really isn't that bad when you break it down. When you compare to Kelvin Kirk that his ability is a 60% stat boost, this one can be promoted all the way to 100% which is incredibly significant when using some stat-based PvP officers. Going backwards this time, the captain's ability, possibly a little bit more narrow in use when defending. McCoy increases mitigation by 300% of the health of all officers on the ship. Anyone know what this sounds like? A defensive-only version of 5 of 10, perhaps. Still maybe not quite as good as 5 of 10, since she works both attacking and defending, but this is a great officer option to have in if you're in a situation uh, necessary to defend. Increasing your own mitigation, therefore ignoring more of your opponent's weapons damage. Taking a look at the Elkars 2.0 officer card, you can see double-double synergy is getting you up to a potential of 500% of health added to mitigation, which is extremely significant. Uses for this officer will vary, but I'm kind of wondering if this isn't maybe a partner to the TOS spot card for a form of base defense. Next officer, Hikaru Sulu, young George Takei, also a rare officer, starting with his officer ability. If the ship is an explorer, hearing an Enterprise theme here, anyone? Uh, if it's an explorer and has morale, then you increase your critical hit chance by 6% per round. Holy smokes, folks. Now listen, maybe not in stats, because he's only a rare officer, but this is con on steroids. 6% per round, regardless of hits taken. And this is going to increase if the ship has morale. Man, and this number is promotable. At tier 2, it's 8%. 10% at tier 3, 12% at tier 4, and maxing out at tier 5, a 15% critical hit chance boost every round. Now, here's where we got to be a little bit careful and precise. Testing is needed. Typically, we see officers who stack use in the game. We see that terminology labeled cumulative. This officer does not have that label, but in the way he's written, he increases the critical hit chance by 6% every round. Now, this sounds like each round, it would go up by 6%. However, in scopely ease, this could mean that he will increase the critical hit chance by 6% when there's morale and the officer will recheck every single round. Therefore, going from base and increasing 6% and then going back down to base if there's no morale. This may not be stacking, folks. Testing is needed, community. Let us know what you find as you find it, and we'll report it to the broader community. Now, we talked briefly last month as we theorized about this arc and what it contained. 
Well, one of those theories was in fact the Doomsday Machine, and this, ladies and gentlemen, was correct. Doomsday is upon us, and with it, we have some new goodies. First, we hinted during our very last podcast taping that this arc would bring with it something from the original roadmap that has not yet been implemented, and I'm pleased to announce to you that this something is Second Builder. Now, after purchasing an unlocked token, you will be able to build two buildings at once. Yes, I say purchase an unlocked token. Second Builder will not be free. However, however, before you panic, know that it's actually only going to cost five bucks. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, only five dollars. If you want this option, you can pick it up for Cinco Dollars. Now, there will be an elite station pack containing this unlock token that will have bonus materials and resources over and above a normal station pack for those of you looking to load up to start building additional buildings. But for anyone wanting a much cheaper option, it's yours for five bucks. And now double up on the buildings to speed along your progression. There are new systems in the game, 15 new Doomsday systems. Ten of them will be used this arc, including three that are warp cell gated. These systems will include the new hostels, Doomsday Worms. Yes, worms. Don't know that they were ever referred to as worms in the show, but cool beans. Doomsday Worms will be present here, ranging in level from 32 to 46, with their strength being approximately equivalent to a normal hostel two levels up. Uh, for example, a level 32 worm is roughly the same as a normal level 34 hostile. The three gated systems will be used for the PvE PvP hybrid event that is returning this month with a few tweaks. And the other events, uh, the other systems rather, will be used primarily for PvE. Doomsday Transwarp cells will be sourced through ticketed events. What does this mean? We're going to dive more in detail in a video coming up very, very soon. But long story short, Scopely is opening up player choice even more and offering up to three choices daily for an event on select days this month. All three pay the same. You just pick your activity with one free ticket provided by Scopely for each day of the event. For more information on the ticketed events, check out our video coming up soon, 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 soon. It's coming. Finally, folks, starting today. At Event Reset, Scopely is bringing back a set of server milestone events. Now, obviously, you might be watching this video later. When I say today, I mean at Event Reset on Arc Launch Day. There will be a server milestone event. These milestones should be relatively achievable, achievable and were based on server population and activity. Today, you'll see server milestone revolve around hostile killing, while future rounds are going to involve other types of metered activities. Other arcs, uh, other arc events will include research leaderboards for the G4 players, PvP leaderboards for all players, ticketed event completion, and of course, a few officer auctions dribbled in here and there. Rewards for various events include the ticketed choice events or the carnival style events, I'll call them. Because, you know, I mean, who went to a county fair? You had to spend tickets to ride, you know, the Ferris wheel or you spent money for a wristband, that kind of thing. OK, so these carnival events among them, uh, among others, will be awarding TOS recruit chest tokens. Oh, my heart goes a pitter patter where TOS officers will live. Spock, Kirk, Uhura, Bones and Sulu so far. These recruit chests will pay out a smaller number of shards initially just due to the number of officers available, but you will see an improved 10% epic rate as compared to 7% in the Disco recover, uh, Recruit Chest. Revisions to this chest will occur as time goes on. Finally, you will see a few cosmic cleanup events, and these seem to be wildly popular over the last couple of months, especially amongst players catching up on the Vidar or Franklin. Well, this month, players short on sarcophagus BPs will find themselves able to pick them up in the cosmic cleanup event store as well. And of course, we do celebrate the return of the Battle Pass Overflow event. Remember from last arc, completing every milestone of this particular event required one 100% perfect participation in every Battle Pass event throughout the entire 20-day arc. This month, also 20 days will be no different. Lots of great changes to the game this arc, including some incredibly long play modifications. 
What do you think, community? Does Scopely continue to impress with an already well-received Arc 1, or does Arc 2 sound like a flop? We'll get into it, do some missions, earn some officers, and grind on some worms. Leave your comments in the uh, comment section below. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Click the bell and share with your team. Arc 2 is here. The original series Doomsday Machine is upon us, and we don't want to uh, we want to know what you think. My name is Ultimate DJs, host of the Talking Trek podcast, the official podcast you hear me panic the official podcast of star trek fleet command despite what community manager panics three-month-old podcast episode says <laughs> and don't forget coming soon videos on the new g4 repair cost structures in depth and with expert analysis as well as a breakdown on an event coming soon how to score utilize your currency and improve your overall payouts this arc much more content to come check them out when they're published and hit us up with questions we'll see you on the next one everybody my name is ultimate djs and i love you and i mean it see you later bye bye